that where you are right now does not determine where you're going to end up. So you're talking about two individuals who woke up as the worst of the worst of the world and they died in the most honorable state possible. They went from being the worst to being the best. Why? They lacked something that a lot of us have and that is kibbutz. Right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. Rabbi Shrahi Sadi wa Yisri Amri wa Ahla Lukta Sami Sani Yatahu Qawmi. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we thank Him for everything He has provided for us. And we send blessings and salutations upon the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon him, his companions, his household, and of course, all of you as well. We ask Allah SWT to accept from us, to bless us, and to forgive us, and to, of course, reward us for this beautiful sacrifice that we made for the sake of Allah. Amen. Amen. Today's reminder is going to be about something that we all have forgotten. It's a reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to hit your ears if you're listening right now. Sometimes we all have lapse in judgment. We make mistakes. We do things that are haram. It's the reality. We're going to sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, tells us that the son of Adam is prone to sin. But the good news is that Allah SWT is the most forgiving. He loves those who repent and to forgive and give glad tidings to those who come on the day of judgment with a ton of istighfar. But sometimes we commit these sins and we think that that's where we are and that's where we're going to be forever. We are that sin. We become that sin. We identify with that sin. And I'm here to let you know right now that where you are right now does not determine where you're going to end up. I'm going to tell you a qasas, a beautiful story from the Quran, beautiful. About two people who were the worst, the worst. Think about the worst person and then times that by 10, the worst. They were the worst. Terrible profession, shirk, you name it. But by the end of that day, that evening, very soon they became the most honored, the highest, the best. If you haven't figured it out already, it is the story of Musa and his brother Harun Islam. When they approached Fir'aun and there was two magicians. That morning, those two magicians who were the chief magicians, they weren't just any basic magicians, they were the magicians. In the morning they woke up as disbelievers as those who were definitely amongst those who were polytheists. Just terrible. Like there's no hope for them. And they practiced magic, which was one of the worst things that you can do even to this day. It's displeasing to Allah. It takes you out the fold of Islam. Those are the type of people I'm talking about right now. Then we know the story of what happens. Musa and Islam throws his staff, their magic gets disappeared, and they see that, whoa, subhanAllah, this was not magic. This is Haq. This is the truth. Immediately, they were the first to accept the message of Islam from Musa and Islam and Harun. They went from being the worst to being the best. Why? They lacked something that a lot of us have, and that is kibber, pride. When the truth came to them, they saw with their own eyes. They're magicians. You see, a magician knows another magician's trick. They know. So when that snake, the serpent, the staff of Musa and destroyed their Dalai this is this is something else. This isn't magic. We bear witness that indeed there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah, and you indeed are the messengers of Allah. They knew. They don't try to change their mind and say, no, 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 no. This is this is the this is the truth. And the Pharaoh does what? Crucifies them, kills them in the nastiest way possible, and then they become martyrs. So you're talking about two individuals who woke up as the worst of the worst of the world and they died in the most honorable state possible. If that can happen to those who are practicing things that we don't even do, we bear witness that indeed there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah and the Messenger Muhammad is indeed his messenger and his servant. 
If that can be for us, don't you think that Allah can change our conditions too? Much better than theirs. So have hope. Don't lose hope and despair in the mercy of Allah. I love you all and appreciate you all for listening to me. It sincerely means a lot to me. Jazakallah once again. Subhanallah.